So welcome to all the PGGs on the call and all our distinguished district leaders on this call this evening. Welcome as we wind down the PET 2022. This evening, our topic is working towards the same goal and using a team approach. Uh, all teams, I'm sure you recognize, should have common goals. They need common goals. Otherwise, you'll just be a group of persons working your own agenda in your own direction. Our presenter this evening is VP Nigel, who is a two-time district trainer. And I must warn you, he's one that can really pull a group into, into action. He will be very engaging. His style is, is interactive and engaging. He will be formally introduced in a few minutes. So let me chip away at his introduction. Before I ask DEG to open the session this evening, I wish to invite DG Sonia to perhaps give us some updates as we swing into conference 2022. DG Sonia. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Good evening, DGE Leslie, past district governors, fellow mm. Rotarians. Thanks for the few minutes to just update you. Um, I've just dropped off the district conference committee call meeting to update you guys here because the anticipation is, is great for us. We are in the final um, throes of putting together, bringing all of this together. Um, we are now nailing down with the COVID unit who are definitely involved in what's going on with us. We are, um, the venues are coming alive. We are, I mean, the, the preparations are going. Um, we are expecting a bumper crowd, as bumper as they are in, in this environment. But suffice it to say that we are having, we're going, we have a good crowd coming. We have over 250 people in all for the conference. Um, of course, the pets would be a little smaller than that. But for conference activities, which includes the pets people, we have about 250 people joining us. So that's a good number, a good number for us to get back out and enjoy some fellowship, get some, renew some acquaintances, make new friends. Um, just to mention that the uh, opening ceremony is on Friday morning, starting sharp at 8.30 in the morning. Also Friday is the, Bar is the Bajan extravaganza on the beach at Copacabana. Um, get ready to enjoy some Bajan food and fellowship and entertainment on that night. Um, of course, we have continuing on Saturday is the conference and the assembly, where of course we do the business of the district. And at that, on Saturday, we also hear from our conference team in from Grenada as to what's gonna happen in Grenada in 2023. Closing off the evening is our white masquerade um, party. Now it's a party folks. We're not looking for you to have ball gowns. We just want you to wear white. Wear white. If you wanna wear a mask, wear a mask. If you don't wanna wear a mask, that's fine too. But what we wanna do is really have a good time as we close the, the two days as we celebrate the fact that we're back in person again, as we celebrate that we are Rotarians, people of action, serving to change lives and making a difference in our communities. So I am, the team is ready. We are, what we need is flight details. Um, and that's, that's the thing that we're really having trouble with at the moment. So if you know somebody that's coming, if you're coming, make sure you get your, your flight details into us as soon as possible. If you know someone is coming, please tell them, make sure that their flight details, because we can't pick you up if we don't know when you're coming. Um, and I just want to tell you, come on, we're looking forward to having you. Uh, enjoy the, the sessions, these last two sessions before coming to Barbados. And um, 
Barbados is ready. The three Rotary Clubs are excited to be putting on another district conference. So thanks so much for the time, Liz. And um, I will see you all. I'm going to drop back, right back off because I think, I think you all want to make sure that we have a good time. So I'm going to go check on these guys and see what they're doing. So thanks so much. DGE, thank you very much for having me this evening. And I'll see you on Saturday. Thank you, DG. Yeah. Pleasure. All right. Th thanks, DG. Thank you so much. I can feel the excitement in your voice. <laughs> and I know there's a whole lot of people are looking forward. Everybody, I think, really want to get together. Again, I knew that it must, it must be some kind of link you had up there because it's like you were always saying, we are going to have conference 2022. It's not going to come. <laughs> so it came so through. Sure. Yeah. Okay, uh, and remember, you. it's a fully vaccinated event. So, yeah. um, and the COVID protocols are in place. So every, we're going to have a safe and an enjoyable time. Thanks a lot, okay. guys. See you all on Saturday. Bye-bye. Okay. All right, bye-bye. Good, thanks. All right, so uh, DGE, I would like to, you know, the usual uh, ask you to share some opening remarks before we introduce, formally introduce our presenter this evening, Nigel Atley. So, thank you. Your yeah. thank you, District Trainer Elect Liz. Um, good evening, all. Uh, welcome to all past district governors on board. It's good to have you here. Thank you for supporting our training sessions. Um, welcome to our district training committee members to, and to all of our president elects, secretary elects, and AGs, those of you who are with us. Um, we are entering day five of pets. Uh, as you realize, it has been structured in a way that we do not burden you with weekly, weekly training activities. So I think every time you, you join us on a, at, at a pet training, you are fresh and ready to hear what's going to happen, what's the next move forward. We have accomplished quite a bit uh, for the last couple of few weeks. Uh, this evening, of course, we are looking at your goals, team goals, and who's, who else to present but a past president, Nigel, but fellow Rotarians, as business people in your own right, you know that to run your business successfully, you must have goals, you must plan and have goals that you intend to achieve. And this is the reason why we are having these meetings to make sure that we have all Rotarians on board as you remember, our vision, to achieve our vision, we must have that plan, we must have a plan. We have four strategic priorities that we must um, <clears throat> take part in, we must um, do to achieve our goals at the end of our rotary year. Um, so it's important that the club president, the club directorship, each, each committee would, would um, would set up the goals along, of course, with their members, because remember, it's a team effort. So you yeah, the president, the secretary, the treasurer, the, uh, is, the all the other service committees would, will all have the individual goals, but that comes together when the team meets to decide what is going to be achieved. And so you must have buy-in from all of your members. It's a, it's a shared vision. It's a common to all members of your club. So it's, it's very important that you, you support your, your, your team, your, your directors, your team of officers to build the shared goals so that we can um, undertake the strategic parties to achieve our vision. <clears throat> um, this evening, as I said before, we have with us past President Niger, who is no stranger to any of us here. He was a trainer last year or year before, I think. So. Um, I think we all know who Nigel is. So again, I welcome you all, and let us look forward to the presentation uh, from Vice President Nigel as he engages us this evening. Um, I will now ask uh, Vice President Leah to introduce Vice President Nigel. Thank you, Leah. Thanks, DGE Leslie. Good night, everyone. Tonight, we have the pleasure of having PP Niger with us. He joined Rotary in Grozy Lake Club, actually, in St. Lucia, back in 1994 when I was just a junior high school student. 
<laughs> had to give you a jab, Nigel. <laughs> and he has served his club and our district, as well as at zone level for several years as GSE leader, district secretary, district trainer, and assistant rotary coordinator and past president twice. He is a Paul Harris Fellow times eight and is currently a member of the Rotary Club of Port of Spain Central. Nigel, by profession, is a civil engineer and a certified PMP, project management professional. He holds a master's in international construction law. He's presently pursuing his postdoctorate studies in dispute avoidance. And he thinks that life gets better with age. I am minded to agree. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming our presenter for this evening, Nigel Aki. Thank you very much, past President Leah, for that kind introduction. Um, just one correction, I think um, my club would be very hurt if I didn't tell you it was Port of Spain West and not Central Port of Spain. We do have a very, a very good bond, but um, I just make that correction. And if you were in high school, I was a young Rotaractor actually when I joined Rotary and the person who pinned me was uh, PDG Lyle. So that's just putting it in age context, okay? <laughs> but thank you very much. First of all, um, DG Leslie, um, past Rotary governors, AGs, but most of all presidents and secretaries, good evening. Liz, thank you very much for inviting me this evening to say a few words. Um, but first of all, what I would like to let you all know is the mandate that I have been given is to inspire and prepare you for your upcoming year on a subject working towards the same goals, a team approach. Well, I'd just like to share some slides with you, which I will do now. So this is we're not going to be any type of lecture. The persons who will be doing the actual work is yourselves. So it's more of an interactive session that I will be having with you. Um, and what it is, it, the objective will make itself clear, but to let you, to get you involved in the team building, I would just like to take you back down some historic issues here, where Rotary International, um, or Rotary as we call it, was founded by a man called Paul Harris on the 23rd of February, 1905. And he started with some professionals of a diverse background, so they could exchange ideas basically um, and form meaningful long-term relationships. Today, we are an organization 117 years old. I'm very proud of that organization as we have evolved tremendously from the building of meaningful relationships to one now of vision, which now extends towards humanitarian services in our communities, as well as all over the world. One of, you may know our major programs as Polio Plus, um, and more recently, what the world can do a lot more of right now is peace. I think DG designate nominee, Debbie would only be too happy to tell you more about peace and peace scholarships around the world. Um, those are two of the main programs that I quite like in Rotary. But in terms of our zone, um, Rotary International, they're in zones, there are 34 zones. And we are zone 34. And of those 34 zones, there are 530, broken down into 535 districts. We are in zone 34, as I said, we are district 70, 30 in the Caribbean. And I guess um, we're made up of several Rotary clubs. I think it's 73 in our zone and several Rotary clubs. Yeah. Okay, so working towards a common goal. And the reason I gave you that brief history of what Rotary is all about is because we could not be an organization that is 117 years old without some planning and vision. 
and by setting some, some sets of long-term as well as short-term goals, managing resources, both human resources and financial resources. Um, and that is not only true of Rotary International, but all the, the member clubs of Rotary International. So the question is, if you are president and you're only there for one year, why do you need any long-term plans or any short-term plans? Well, I'll answer the, the short-term plans first. Um, the short-term plans are basically for you to get past your year. Um, so you should have a plan of action. I would encourage those of you who are on the call now to ensure that you start your planning exercise, at least start it before you go Barbados. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is that the year starts, and those of you who don't do it before the year starts, play catch up until September. And I, I kid you not, you will play catch up until September. So please start your short term planning. But in term, terms of long term planning, what you want to ensure is that there is the continuity of the club that you have inherited and that you are able to pass that on both the management and financial aspects of it. So in your planning, you need to be careful and you certainly need to be focused on the, what you're doing. So in this presentation, um, what I'm going to ask you all to do is I'm going to be putting you all into some teams, which I will discuss with you a little later on. But when we hear the, the term goal settings and strategic plans, a lot of us think, good Lord, we're not in a boardroom anymore. But the long-term plans do not need to be any major objectives in terms of what you would see in a boardroom. They can be a simple one page. I think in one of the um, series I attended prior to this one, um, someone did mention it, that you don't need a dossier. You need a simple one, uh, a simple plan of how the club will proceed. And this can be proceeding over the next five to 10 years. Simple things like, our goals over the next five years is to increase members by the number 10. Well, you can't reach year five with bringing in no members and suddenly decide you're going to bring in 10 members that year. Uh, how are we going to grow our fundraisers? We now make $20,000 on a fundraiser. What plans do we need to make put in place to raise $60,000 to meet our, our goals and objectives in our community service projects? Do we need strategic partners from the community in, in the business environment? How do we, the other thing that you may want to know is how do you improve your relationships with your Rotaract club or your community core? Those type of things don't happen overnight. And that is what I mean. It's not a major long-term, uh, not a boardroom type long-term planning. Simple things as a Rotary club, how are you going to manage more effectively? And one of the things that um, trainer Liz is very, very, very adamant about is training. And that is something that you should be looking at within your membership as well. How do we improve training in, in our club? So what I would encourage you, tell you to do now is to sit with your potential precedents, not past your year, some new members, some old members, and one or two past presidents, and come up with that plan of action that you intend to have. And why I said potential presidents is because if they are in after you, they have bought into the plan already. So what you're looking at is continuity, not from, from what you have inherited, but what you are also going to pass down. And once you've come up with that, plan of action, and you can call it what you want, strategic plan, long-term planning, make sure you sit down with your club and you discuss it with your club. And once you've discussed it with your club and you've had enough buy-in from everyone, you can therefore put that into action. But one of the th things about having all these wonderful plans, the last thing you must do is report back on it. Now, 
as Leah said, I'm a, a project manager, a, a project management professional. And those are the things that I do fundamentally in the job that I do. So today's session is going to be a team of breakouts, breakout rooms, and there are 12 rooms. Now, I'm seeing on the call here 75 people. So there's some rules as you go into each room. You will be provided with a subject, which I am, you will be given depending on the room you're in, which I will explain later on, on a slide. And you will select a leader who will be given three minutes at the end of coming out of the room. You'll be given that, I think it's 25 minutes in the room. And you will discuss that topic and your leader will have to report in three minutes time at the end back to the whole focus of the 77 of us here. There's only one rule. The leader cannot be a past district governor or an AG. And what I would encourage you to do is you need to turn on your cameras within your room. Some of you may be a little shy, but turn on your cameras in your room and first of all, introduce yourselves to one another. And in introducing yourselves to one another, there's a reason I'm doing that. When you go to a conference, make sure you seek out the persons in your room. At least you will have one or two friends there already. So this is a team building exercise from now for when you reach Barbados. As I said, select the leader and report. Now, PDG Lara told you how to make, how to, to record what you need to do. Please use the tip she gave you, what the action points are. We do not need um, a, a board report here. You have only three minutes to report and there are 12 rooms. So no one, based on what I'm seeing, no one can hide in any one room. There are six people per room and the DGs, age past district governors and AGs, while they may participate, they're there for support only. Okay, and then you will return to the room, the main room. The main leader will post his name or her name in the chat box so we can unmute them. Uh, you will be asked, to present in the order of your numbers. And the great thing about the Caribbean, we're separated by water. And there's 17 territories within our district. We speak different languages. We have different cultures. So there are gonna be a lot of different answers. There's no one correct answer. I think PDG David said it best in, in last weeks or week before, is, there's no one size fits all. Each club dynamic stand on it, stands on its own. And therefore your answer is the correct answer for your club. It may not fit another club, but this is why we're discussing it because you're supposed to come to consensus on what you think will work best. Okay, so what I will encourage you now to do is to take a screenshot of this, all of you who will be joining rooms, because this is the, these are the topics you will see which room that you have been set off in. Um, Liz, if you can just interject here, everyone has been pre pre assigned rooms. Well, yes, based on the emails that we have, but I've seen some some persons with uh, phone names, so we may have to do some shopping around. But we we have made provisions for that. But everyone. Have been pre assigned to a room. Perhaps it may, maybe some persons who will not, who are not here, or probably will be in a room. So we may have some rooms we have more people and some persons um, and rooms that are less. Okay, thanks a lot, Liz. Okay, so Rotarians, this is a team building exercise. Please introduce yourselves. Um, it may be a friend that you will have forever coming out of one of these rooms. Um, Believe it or not, I've never met Liz in person and we've worked over three years together now, Liz. 
um, and I've never met her in person. So that just goes to show you, Rotary is a, a powerful place um, and it's great to, to, that you're all here. So if there are any questions um, that anyone may have um, before we, we go into the breakout rooms, Liz, anything in the chat boxes or questions? Uh, no, no, no questions, um, but probably give them a minute or so if anyone has any questions, if you need any clarity. I think, I mean, you were very clear in terms of what is expected in the room and when you come out of the room as well. Well, welcome back. I think everybody is back here now, Liz. Yes, yes. We're okay, so what I would suggest we do is put the names into the chat box, the group number and... Um, the name of the person who will be doing the delivery. And what I would do is, should we just go by whoever posts their name first, Liz? Yeah, I, I think so, yeah, because it's okay. gonna be easier that way. So we, you know, they all post their names and then they, they can go. Okay, so um, I did go okay, out. I'll, 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 um... All right, so. Are you group gonna six, group, group six? six. I, I'll call. I'll call group six okay. first. So, Irvi, some Irvi is presented on behalf of group six. Group oui, mais écoutez, bonsoir, bonsoir à tous. Donc, euh, le thème que nous avions, c'est réaliser des actions, des plans avec des ressources financières en baisse. Donc euh, les différentes idées que nous avions, c'était donc, donc d'obtenir de, des dons en nature, c'est-à-dire en fait de remplacer les ressources financières par des dons en nature, euh, créer des événements où plusieurs Rotariens ou invités pourront participer par des donations ou des actions rotariennes, c'est-à-dire qu'en fait on multiplie le nombre de personnes qui participent pour avoir des, des coûts euh, ou une participation qui est plus, plus qui est réduite. Et au final, le nombre de personnes qui participent compenserait le, le don unitaire. Un peu comme pour les causes ou pour les rallyes, où on a un nombre de personnes plus important qui participent. Ensuite, euh, l'idée, c'est de faire aussi de piloter le budget, c'est-à-dire donc de faire un compromis entre les objectifs et les coûts. Et donc de rationaliser l'objectif que l'on veut atteindre par rapport aux coûts que l'on est prêt à mettre, ou en tout cas par rapport à, à ce que peut coûter une action. L'autre point que nous avons euh, identifié, c'est le fait de diversifier le nombre de sponsors, et plutôt que de faire porter le coup sur un sponsor, donc de diviser encore le nombre de personnes qui pourraient contribuer à la réalisation donc, de l'action. Et, euh, et ensuite, le, la, le dernier point, c'est réaliser des actions qui ne coûtent rien avec du temps rotarien. Donc ça signifie que nous pouvons sensibiliser, euh, 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 donner du temps pour euh, informer le public, soit sur des, des, des actions telles que le diabète, des actions de santé, des actions de, 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 de bibliothèque ou en tout cas du temps que l'on donnerait plutôt que de, 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 de solliciter du, de, de, de l'argent pour les faire réaliser à notre place. Donc, du temps rotarien contre de l'argent. Voilà, c'est ce que nous avons euh, au niveau du groupe 6 euh, identifié. Les Liz, um, if we can just call the name, uh, just read out what the the group is supposed to be discussing, please. So when we're following on, we know. Thank you. Okay, okay. Or, or we could ask the group as before they start speaking to read the, their topic that they are on, because yeah, I don't yeah. really have it on my screen right. Yeah, better. Yeah, let the group. All right. Go. Yeah, let it, let the group uh, read it. So Nandio group group nine. Namdio, N A M D U, is supposed to be on now. Is Namdio? Oh, yeah. AB, please make sure you unmute Namdio. Namdio. He's on. Where is Namdio? He's unmuted.
Yeah. Oh, all right. All right, but while we you're waiting that week, you can go after Nick. Okay, I'm, I'm, right. I'm on. I'm on. Oh, okay, okay, okay. There you go. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, so our topic, which is uh, we were group nine and the importance of planning with our community. Um, uh, we have three key points with respect to planning with the community, why it, was, why it is important. One is to identify, properly identify the needs of the community such that we can address it properly. Um, two, build trust with the community so that we can have proper communication and um, be able to target the needs properly. And, and three, to conserve resources. For example, basically, if we do not properly identify the needs, we can misdirect resources and, and um, waste funds and time. Uh, so those are the key it, um, issues related to, um, you know, the uh, working with the community and planning with the community. Uh, what we found interestingly is that um, every uh, territory and um, to some extent every club does it a bit differently and um, some of the probably best practices that make that can come out of the, the brief discussions we had um, is to get um, to have better con contact with um, civil society, other groups, city council, in our case as well, maybe ministries, to find out what are the needs within the community to better inform ourselves. We, in, in our case, in our club, um, which we cover San Fernando South, uh, a lot of the needs actually or identification of the needs came from uh, some of the, um, the members themselves and their links within the communities. Um, it was important as well to build our um, networks with the various um, groups, which would again help to direct resources properly. And um, uh, Basically, in terms of uh, when there are emergency situations in the community, the fact that we were able to build networks would, um, would help to address emergency needs even better. And uh, in the, I, I believe, um, is it St. Martin, our member from St. Martin, uh, work with the various foundations that do community work in the community and they in fact have been able to plan um, on a monthly basis a community um, community work or outreach um, from that Rotary Club. Uh, so I think I would have covered most of what we spoke about um, any of the members um, who wish to add anything, please do so on the chat as discussed. If there are any questions, I'll be, um, feel free to ask now. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Namdeo. We have group seven coming up next, and group seven is NERCRI and the, the benefits of goal setting and was discussed in that group. So, a pleasant good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Nikri Mills Jean Mattis, and I am from the Rotary Club of Antigua Sundown. And in our group, we had Jamila from the Rotary Club of Barbados and Kai from the Rotary Club of La Amiga St. Kitts. We also had Jerome Sophie. Um, Jerome didn't speak very much English, so I just knew that he was, I think, from French Guyana. Um, so, we had as just stated the benefits of goal setting. So one of the premises we realize is that, you know, you must have buy-in with the persons that you're actually setting the goal with, right? 
And one of the reasons for this is that it would provide, one of the benefits of goal setting is that it provides direction and it helps to chart a course of action and roadmap for the year, you know, your rotary, we, because we're looking at rotary, we looked at it um, as having a map and direction for the year ahead. It provides clarity for decision making. It unifies members towards working towards the same goal. You know, so because you would have gotten the buy-in early, all of the members in the goal setting process, and once it's discussed with each member, you know, we all working along towards the same ends. It provides a tangible sense of measuring progress. And because it is measurable, we saw that, you know, learning can be made where you can learn from your weaknesses and build on your strength and your strengths and then say the future president can also use it as a benchmark for the next year. So that, that was some of what we came up with and we thank you. All right, the next group is up is Natasha, which is group 10. And they're talking about, they did discuss the vision, short, long, and, and long-term of your club plan, sorry. The vision, short, and long-term club plan. Natasha, group 10. Yes, good evening. Thank you, Liz. So in discussing this topic, we basically um, spoke about the different projects that we have either already implemented and we plan to continue it, which would be the long term and also new projects that clubs are looking to introduce this year and going forward. And I think one thing that stood out very early is that even though we are from, we're from different countries, we're from different clubs, we actually have a lot in common in terms of our plans or, you know, the projects that we already have. For example, two of the clubs, from two different countries, Guyana and Suriname, have a project in place where we are encouraging the use of reusable bags, which is going towards DGE Leslie's mandate with the environment. So we're proud of that. So basically the project entails, you try, we're trying to stamp out the use of the single use plastic bags. So you order these bags from overseas or locally, and you brand them not only with your club logo, Rotary logo, and the goal is to try to sell them. Actually, somebody said that they're going to be selling them at, or bringing them to conference, so everybody should have their money ready and be ready to support that club with that. Something else that we found that we had in common is a lot of the clubs are doing projects aimed or geared at school children, at students. So some examples of that, there's one club who, because of the whole COVID and, you know, online learning and so on, they would have recognized the need in their community for computers for students in need who don't have those. But the difficulty that they face with that is they realize that trying to fund a project like that from club funds obviously got very expensive very quickly. So the new plan that they're going to be implementing is trying to get or getting um, friends and family to sponsor a shoot and sponsor a family so that that could become something long term that they could um, continue. Another club has a youth elevation project where they go out into the schools, they reach out to the students for various things. And another very exciting one that one club is doing is they have an upcoming video competition, so to speak. The aim is going to be on diabetes, and they're going to be encouraging the children to make videos. Um, they would obviously have to do research, prepare a short, whether it be a poem, a skit, something on diabetes, and they would have to upload these videos maybe to Facebook. A panel will be put in place, and voting and judging will take place, and that is how they are going to get the... Um, the winner for that. We also have a club which is a cause-based club which focuses on the environment, DGE Leslie, and that club has an ongoing project where they have sponsored or adopted a kitchen garden for a home with disabled persons. So over the past year they have really built up that garden. They've taught the 
staff how to you know prepare healthier meals for the residents and that's an ongoing project so that is the gist of what we would have discussed we considered the long-term and the short-term projects that we have in place and that we plan to put in place thank you thank you um natasha <laughs> next up is group eight who is who discussed the importance of managing stakeholders expectations and it's laurianne Oui, merci. Alors effectivement, nous avons évoqué euh, le, le sujet donc concernant euh, comment satisfaire les attentes des parties prenantes euh, dans un club. Euh, dans un premier temps, euh, en tant que membre du bureau, euh, nous avions posé donc la question comment devons-nous donc euh, avoir une vision. Euh, euh, comment dire, basé sur le point de vue des membres à propos d'un sujet à mettre en place. Et dans un premier temps, il est question donc euh, de connaître le parcours euh, de chacun, les motivations, euh, car en effet, elles sont toutes différentes. Euh, en outre, chaque membre a des objectifs différents également. Euh, L'enjeu est de définir donc, les objectifs de chacun et pouvoir les adapter à la vision commune euh, mise en place pour euh, réaliser euh, le projet. Euh, en apportant, donc, euh, la, la richesse serait d'apporter des, des, des points de vue différents sur euh, la même thématique à aborder. Dans un second temps, en tant que président élect, euh, le problème serait également de définir, donc la problématique serait de définir euh, quel point choisir, euh, quel sujet principal à aborder, quelles sont les priorités en termes de projets à mettre en place euh, selon l'objectif euh, les, euh, les, euh, euh, du club euh, sur euh, le court terme pour l'année à venir et euh, qui, quel projet prioriser dans un premier temps et euh, pourquoi. Et pour cela, donc, deux points ont été abordés. Euh, D'abord, euh, définir quels sont ces objectifs à court terme et long terme à mettre en place. Euh, quels sont les projets, quelle est la vision euh, du, du bureau euh, annuel, donc du bureau euh, élect le bureau en place et euh, mettre en place donc euh, des indicateurs euh, de priorité pour pouvoir euh, suivre justement cette même vision euh, et réaliser donc euh, selon les objectifs à atteindre les différents projets qui ont été proposés par euh, les, les membres du club. Mavis, is she finished? Is yeah, Marianne she's finished? finished. Yeah. All right, thank you. Because we're kind of getting a, a little muffled, um, delayed kind of feedback. So, but anyhow, thank you. Thank you, Lorian. Next, next up is group five. This is Gregory. And Gregory is going to, well, their group discussed planning projects that cannot be completed in, in one rotary year. I'm looking forward to that response. All right, good night, everybody. All right, so I had um, a really good discussion, especially part of it I was missing. So they decided to gang up on me and make me present. There seems so, to be something wrong with Gregory's audio. Can you hear me? Well, Everyone I'm can hearing. hear me? I'm, yeah, I'm hearing. I'm hearing. Yeah, I'm we're hearing good. Clearly. Okay, great. All right, planning projects that can't be completed in one rotary year. So we broke it down into a couple of things. One is that we have to have good project selection. There must be common interest among the members, right? And it should be a theme that can attract finance and sponsorship, right? You also have to look at um, the second thing, which is the project scope and the strategic plan. We spoke about um, the project charter with a summary with the needs that we're addressing, the goals outlining sustainability of the project, um, the life cycle of the project for effectiveness, 
sponsorship and committed financing plans, which would straddle the periods, multiple periods, and uh, milestones, which are very important. And the milestones would actually be very good if you could um, align them with the rotary year, right? I mean, you could have some in between, but even as you change boards, it'd be good to align that. Um, the third thing that we talked about was the project committee. Well, we shouldn't have only board members. It should include future leaders. That's one of the things that um, past president Nigel mentioned in his um, narrative before. And um, it would be good also for us to secure strong partners, partners that could um, exist even ex external to Rotary um, beyond the, the, at least for the entire life cycle of the project. And then we spoke about um, project reports, comparing the targets with the progress actually made, continuously reviewing the gaps and adapting to changes along the way. And of course, continuous assessment against the plan, the original plan for effectiveness. So that was my team. It was Hugh, Kathy, Justin, Agnes, Genevieve, and I believe it was Felix. All right. Th thank you, Gregory. You're Next welcome. up is Indira um, on group four, and they discussed uh, the fact that smaller groups, which is um, smaller clubs, less than 25 members, do have flooding challenges, and that group is supposed to discuss that. So Indira, you're up, group four. Yes, good evening, everyone. Um, of the seven people that were in our group, there are only two that have less than 25 people. So <laughs> that was a bit of a challenge, but we did end up discussing it because many of us face experience where there are, there's this only 20%, you might have a large club, but you have 20% of the people doing, actually doing the work. So I think everybody had the ability to speak, um, to speak a little bit to it. Um, one of the main things that we were saying with um, smaller clubs is that many of the members end up getting exhausted or overwhelmed or often burnt out um, because they may have to play, play multiple roles for different projects and so on. Um, in, turn, um, in turn, that affects engagement and participation and involvement in projects because, um, of course, difficulties in executing projects will, will arise as well. Um, there's also, somebody also mentioned there was a difficulty in forming committees because you have many members playing multiple roles. So if you have a small club, um, you have members playing multiple roles, it's hard to actually comprise to get a committee that is effective and so on. Um, we also spoke about finding balance between the younger Rotarians as well, between the younger Rotarians and the newer and the older or more seasoned, as we say in our club, Rotarians. Um, there may be strong personalities, and because the club is small, you might have the more seasoned Rotarians speaking about this is how it's always been done, and then the younger ones, you know, wanting to work. So it's, uh, you know, it's a bit of a difficulty there as well. Um, overall, though, um, the major issue, like I mentioned, was people getting burnt out and having full buy-in on various projects as well. Uh, but we did speak as well about uh, knowing the strengths and the weaknesses of, of the group. When you have a smaller group, it's a bit easier to understand what each member can bring. So we consider that to be a benefit. So although we identified a number of challenges, we were able to also see that there, there are a few benefits in having a smaller club. And many of the, club mem uh, many of the smaller clubs tend to have uh, personal friendships with each other. So that helps with motivation um, to attend meetings and to get involved in projects. So I think I think I covered everything in summary. Thank, I don't you, thank you. Thank you, Indira. All right, next up is group one, Bevon and Bevon uh, in this group, and I was in that group, tips on maintaining team dynamics. So Bevon, the friend is yours. AB Fong Bevon. Hey, hi, good evening. Oh, Had some yeah, difficulty yeah. in meeting. Yes, yeah, so oh, our okay. group, uh, as Liz said, was group one, and our group um, topic was tips on maintaining the team dynamics. So we discussed a few things, um, and this is not an exhaustive list, uh, but we discussed those um, ingredients and elements that may impact and influence the group's behavior. Um, and uh, in no other priority, 
uh, we discussed um, the importance of effective communication among the group to really enhance the group dynamics. Uh, we felt that that is something that was key, crucial, and important to really um, drive in the team in furtherance to the group's objectives and goals. Um, we felt that listening was an important part of that and that members needed to um, actively listen to hear you know, fresh ideas and concepts um, in planning and um, organizing. Uh, it was also important to engage members uh, to ensure that they uh, are always interested in what the team is um, organizing, planning or setting out to do, and always encourage them to get involved. You know, sometimes if you um, don't take a proactive approach with members, sometimes they may feel left out and marginalized, and you may not be able to kind of um, harness some of the talents and um, get them to leverage the skills to bring forward to the team. Um, we also discussed the importance of clearly defining uh, roles and responsibilities. Uh, and therefore in doing that, um, you kind of um, set the tone and make clear what the expectations are um, of the team and the group. We also discuss, uh, like in Durham, as she mentioned in the other group, uh, to explore the dynamics of, well, at least be cognizant of the age gaps within your, your team. Um, as she said, you know, you may have seasoned members and you may have younger members and sometimes you may be a bit experienced based on their perspective. So it's important to be uh, uh, understand those, those unique differences. Um, we also discuss about um, certain time frames for the goals uh, of the team. Um, we also discuss the idea of rotating team members, especially uh, newer members, maybe periodically or just for short um, periods of time um, intermittently so that they can get a feel for the different roles and um, understand it. So in doing so, you know, persons are not bored, uh, it, you know, the, it's a little more vibrant and ultimately it belongs to having a more robust team, ultimately. Um, we also discussed uh, the importance of encouraging feedback, um, where uh, no idea uh, is a bad idea and everybody's encouraged to voice their opinions, to ventilate, uh, in particular when there are divergent viewpoints or dissenting view. Um, the, the mechanism or the method um, for feedback also was raised, whereas um, depending on the scenario, uh, WhatsApp may be convenient, may be expedient to send uh, some feedback for a decision on WhatsApp, uh, as opposed to email, and in some instances, uh, a phone call may be more appropriate. So it just depends. But these things are important considerations um, overall. Uh, and like I said, it's important, uh, I think, lastly, to recognize divergent perspectives and viewpoints um, in the group. Everybody it brings together the, some of their own individual experiences. And that is why, you know, there's no I in team. And, you know, it's a shared responsibility. And everybody comes together uh, to form part of a whole to make the group a little more dynamic, energetic, robust to achieve whatever mandate objectives they have set out uh, for the team. So those, I think, uh, were the ideas in summary, in a nutshell. Thank you. Thank you, Bevan. Spot on. Excellent. Uh, group three, Chris, uh, who they discussed today, group the effective, group effective club planning, the do's and don'ts. Chris. Hi. Uh, effective call planning. We had uh, four members and myself in the group. We came up with some items that um, we would like to present to the club, uh, to the members. Firstly, um, we looked at the, the fact that the Rotary provides a Rotary guide for each year. And to follow that and advise the club members of that is a good method to effectively strategize the entire year. So following the Rotary calendar was, was one of the effective methods we saw as planning. The next item we saw was by listing your events for the year with due dates and by uh, listing them by months and if you could even list the directors or the person responsible for, for the events that you are having in the year, it will, effect, it will keep the club focused on those events. Thirdly, we looked at how we could plan for fellowship. Being Rotary, uh, spawned out of uh, fellowship, 
Uh, we believe that uh, fellowship is important in effective club planning so that we will have most participation. Larry uh, advised us that uh, any planning, we should keep in mind that keep what is good. So if you have some projects that are good and they are progressing the clubs, you keep them, you make sure you go with them, but add small things to it. That way you can effectively build more into the club. One of the things that I added is uh, a club team. Rotary is Imagine Rotary. Our club team should probably be something out of imagination. Like the first form of uh, your goal is imagination. So if we want to have a club focus on the Rotary international team, we, the club should consider doing a club team as well. And um, last but uh, not least, uh, one of the effective things I found when I was president back in 2000 was a plan, uh, actually printed manual for members on what you're planning to do for the year and personalize it, give each member it, put the name on the first page, probably attach a little, um, a, a little words of advice uh, to it and include all these documents. The document might come up about 20, 25 pages, but with that, it's like your Bible for the year to go forward with your members. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I think I missed uh, probably the English version of group eight, uh, Sonia, managing stakeholder expectation. Uh, thank you, Liz. Um, <clears throat> actually, I entered my name into the chat in error. Um, Lori Ann was presenting on behalf of the group. Okay, okay, okay. All right, no problem. I just thought that uh, maybe it was an English version. That, that's okay. All right, group 11, Chanel, developing and reporting to your sponsor, to your club, and to the district, especially in relation to grants. That's group 11, Chanel. Good night, I I got right. right, so with regards to the topic, we discussed what are the reports and we need to confirm firstly, what are the reports and obligations at each level towards the club, the sponsor and the district? How do we collect the information? Who is going to collect the information and what information goes into these reports? So those things need to be clarified first before we proceed. With regards to the report, we need to have monthly updates or unless otherwise agreed or required depending on the size and the duration of the product, the project, right? And this report would go to members of the club as well as the sponsor and the district, right? Things like the financial status of the grant funded events, um, photos and stuff like that would be included in this report. We also need to complete a needs assessment report for transparency to the club, the sponsor and the district. Uh, what are the needs we expect to meet with the project and things like that. Who is responsible for various tasks that needs to be clear, especially on the club level. Who's responsible for managing the finances, the logistics and the actual reporting activity. Um, also reporting on each phase of the project also need to complete a post-mortem report. Was the project a success? How can the club improve the project if there is to be a repeat, repeat in the years to come? And where are the reports stored for access by successors that would take over the project should it continue in the years afterwards? And that is it. Thank you, thank you, Shana. Hmm. All right, the final group, the last group, last is group two. Ernest, who's gonna, whose group discussed the characteristics of effective goals? Thank you very much. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Ernest Noelin um, from St. Lucia, attached to the Rotary Club of Grosile. In, my, in our group was um, Charles, Wadi, Wendy, and Charlotte. Uh, we came up with a few characteristics. The first one would be um, the goals must be challenging. Uh, most times we set goals and we don't get enough participation from our, our club members. And it's because it, does, it doesn't challenge them. It does, it's not 
exciting enough. Um, with that said, um, being challenging, it must be uh, specific. You must have a clear goal, clear objectives as to what you want to achieve. Uh, moving on, the expectations is another characteristic that we need to pay um, attention to. Uh, in the Rotary, we have a lot of experiences, a lot of skilled people, and it's very easy for us to sit in our club and come up with a brilliant goal so, or a brilliant um, uh, project. But are we in touch with the community or the, the, um, the target group that we want to, to provide the services to? So our expectations, we, it, we should have a connection with our community um, so that um, we are not having the project for the club, but for the community. Um, also, it should be measurable. We, after your goals should produce um, something that you could um, measure whether it is uh, have a good impact or did you meet the goals? Something that you can measure. And that impact could be both positive and negative. And as we discussed, um, Wendy um, alluded to the negative um, impact because not every goal, not every um, project that you undertake would be positive or positive, but the negative one, we should take it um, as a lesson um, to have it better to learn from it and to learn from each other. Uh, our, the other point is um, it should be achievable. We have small groups, small Rotary clubs. We have very huge clubs. And um, yes, we want to be, do grand, have grand um, projects, but we should do it within our, um, our strengths and our, our, our size. Uh, and lastly, availability of resources. So your goals, you set your goals, but you set it in a manner that you know how you're going to achieve um, those goals. We always need, almost every time we need resources to achieve our, our goals um, when, we, when we set it. So that those goals could, very, could be um, human resource and it could very well be monetary and most times we need money to drive anything that we do. So um, availability of resources should play a big um, part in we setting our goals for, um, for our clubs. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Ernest. Uh, you know, obviously there was lots of discussions and you know, just, just listening to you, you guys, I realize that a common goal is what separates a high performing team from a bad project experience. Nigel, over to you. Thank you very much, Liz. Uh, I must congratulate all the presenters um, on the excellent presentation. And um, I just want to go back to the, the, the name of this, um, this presentation, which was working towards the same goals, a team approach. And what you did in the 25 minutes is you formed a team you selected, I, I suppose selected, although some people told me they were volunteered as, as a leader of that team. And you were given three minutes in which to concisely present back to the rest of us, uh, a, a precy and exactly what was discussed in your rooms. Um, but most importantly, um, answers came from yourselves. And the reason I wanted to do this was, was apart from the one that I mentioned earlier, that you meet one or two people in the room um, who may become friends in the end. It was that team building effort, first of all. The other reason was being um, not all the answers come from the head table. And I have been training in this district now for what seems to be the last decade or so. And when I used to be at the live con um, conferences and presentations, we sit on a podium and we stare into a sea of blank faces 
and, and it doesn't relate to what they're doing. And this way you were able to relate to one another and get your points across. So I do hope the exercise that um, I attempted to, to, to get going here um, will continue with you all. Um, one of the good things with the people who presented, um, this is just another training for your presentation skills. You will become leaders, you will become presidents if you're not already president or president elect, and you will have to present on the drop of a hat. You will go to functions and people will say, oh, you're the president of the club, you come and say a few words. So this has given you that type of confidence and that kind of springboard in which to start. You're among friends here, and the great thing about it is um, that you know one another, or at least get to know one another in, in this area. Um, there were some excellent presentations. Liz, I don't know if there are any questions that people may need answered coming out of it. Um, one of the things I believe it was the last speaker, Ernest, was it, or Ernest Llewellyn? Yes, Ernest, it was Ernest. He, he, he spoke about goals and, and, and the challenges and all that. And he left one of the most crucial points, I think, in terms of, of, um, of, of the, the effective goals is the achievability until last. He left it until very last, which I thought, um, you know, he left it, left me in suspense. I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> talking about great and challenging and whatnot. I think that was a... You left, left that one till last, and I thought that was quite good. You know, you, you keep the last one till the last. And that just shows that um, I think, Liz, that we have some great um, upcoming leaders um, in our district, just having had to present for that three minutes. Um, but I don't know if there are any questions that have come out of the, the various teams that they would have any questions they want to put in the chat box that we may be able to answer with somebody else on the on the. Um, the webinar this evening might be able to answer. I don't know how much time All we right, have. Let me, let me hand over to AB. AB has been monitoring that aspect. He might have yep. been collecting some questions as well. Sure. Okay. Nigel, the first one we got up is um, just going to read verbatim here. Uh, team alignment, which is really making sure that everyone is on the same page and working towards a common objective. As a club takes on more community work, there's a chance that the unity we began with could be morphed into dissonance. Can you share some tips on how members can recalibrate their focus? That's it. Wow. You, you wanna give me a harder question <laughs> first? Okay. Um, okay, and this is, this is my perspective on this now. There's, there's no team that you, you will not have differences within the team during the course of any project. Um, the good thing is when those challenges come up, um, they, they do, it's not a good thing. It is good and yes, not good. Um, it, it proves the strength of the team, okay? So what happens is the team dynamic may be slight, put slightly out of balance. But what I would encourage team members to do, don't make the disagreements personal. That is when the team dynamic starts to split apart. Agree to disagree on what the, the subject matter is. But before you proceed any further, on that project or well, whatever you're doing, agree a way forward. Now, one may say that not everybody agrees and you have what I've, I've commonly heard in the Rotary circles, the younger members and the older members or the more mature members. One has to remember that different people have different ways of approaching the same subject. And therefore, again, agree to disagree, but once you leave the table, make sure that you've all agreed on a way forward. And just because 
someone has not agreed with the point you have put forward, uh, don't take up your football and leave the game. Uh, stay there. It's, it's what the, the, it's a team dynamic. The team decision may not be the one that you wanted, but again, it's the majority of the team. So at the end of the day, it's, it, it comes back to a team decision. And, and that is the best way that I have always found um, forward in, in that if the team approaches it from a, a standpoint of moving forward as a whole, let the majority rule. You may not agree, but agree to disagree. I don't know if that answers the question. Fantastic. Uh, Liz, I'm not seeing any more questions in the box. Um, so the, the floor is open for you if anyone. I mean, we've got Nigel on stage. Uh, take the opportunity, I mean, to, to, you know, to shoot your questions at him. I'm sure he got something up his sleeve that, you know, would help you uh, in, in, you know, clearing up any issues you may have on the topic of today. But I'm not seeing, there's not, nothing else in the box. I know, yeah, I'm running it again. No, I don't see. Uh, it, it must be that um, Nigel was crystal clear in all um, his short presentations. And definitely, I think that the, the group dynamics really played out well in terms of persons, you know, having that discussion. And I think that this helps really, when, especially when you're on Zoom. Uh, the discussions within the group. I think that's the richness and that's where all the learnings take place when you're in the group and you're looking and listening to diverse personalities and diverse opinions and all of those things. I did mention in, in our group, one of the things that I think hampers a lot uh, of clubs, and I, I mean, I always say this, is that we all have different personalities and Tracy alluded to that in our group as well, where you know, I always say everybody's unique and special and bring something really great to the table, but we express ourselves, our linguistic styles are different. We have different personalities. Some are extroverts, some are introverts. And, and, you know, we must recognize that those differences can be used constructively if only we listen. And I think that's one of the things uh, that came out a lot uh, this evening where communication is key. Listening is also doubly important as well. Uh, Nigel, you want to wrap up? By saying anything else? Yeah, um, Liz, first of all, uh, thank you very much for inviting me this evening. This this was absolutely a pleasure. Um, at least I didn't have to come on 16 times this, this year. Um, but most importantly, I'd like to wish all the incoming presidents the best of luck and the incoming secretaries for the year ahead. Now, I have heard presidents say it was the worst experience of their life, and I've heard other presidents say it's the greatest experience of their lives. It all depends on perspective and how you wish to deal with it. What I would say to all of you, Rotary is something we love, and we do it because we love it. And therefore, once the fun goes out of it, it becomes a burden on us. So what I would say, remember why you joined Rotary during the course of your year, and let that be the focus of how you continue through the year. You will have the high points and you will have the low points. I will not fool you. You will not meet deadlines and you will, you will achieve some deadlines. You will have board members who will not pull their weight and board members who will go overboard to help you. These are all human traits. And especially in the times we're in now, you have to be a little more careful on how um, charitable you are to other people's time. And I use that word charitable simply because some presidents, not all, but some believe that if you're on my board, you're supposed to work 24 seven for me. Never mind, I have a wife and a family and another real job that, that pays the bills. So you need to be very charitable with people's times. And, and with the COVID pandemic, a lot has happened over the last two years. We certainly don't know what has happened in people's lives. So all I'm asking you is be a little more patient in your year than you would have had to be in previous years and enjoy your year most of all. Enjoy it and have a good time. Thank you very much, Liz. 
Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nigel, for those words. One of the things that I, I think you mentioned uh, obliquely in your opening presentation is the fact that this is not a one year trip. Yeah, you, you're president this year, but you, you will extend beyond this year. It is not 12 months and you're signed out, signed off, and then the club continues and somebody else takes over. It's important that you see it as a uh, as a journey, your, your rotary journey. This is just a pit stop and, you know, enjoy this journey, but you, you continue to support anyone who's coming in next. So thank you so much, uh, Nigel, and thank you all for your participation. I think that our district is in good hands. Listening to you guys tonight, I think our district is in good hands. All right, thank you. DG Leslie, could I ask you to close, please? Thank you. Thank you, District Trainer Lewis. And my friend Nigel, that was a really wonderful presentation, very thorough. Um, you certainly provoked a lot of discussion from our, our members. And, you know, coming out of it, it, it shows us the diversity we have in our, in our district. It was clearly evident that from different groups, different, different um, ideas were put forward different ideas, different, thought, different thoughts, different ways of how they will go about doing things. So it's, it's really, this was a good exercise for President Elex to really get the views of all the different members here. And, and you know, they should be reminded that yes, every member is diverse. Every member will have a different view, different value, but your job as a president and, and your team is to have all of these views, bring them together, and and as as you, as the topic says, work towards a common goal. You know, you, you you take them, you sift them, and you work towards a common goal, so that everybody becomes engaged. I mean, you may have some persons who may not agree with everything, but certainly um, you need the engagement of all all your members in whatever uh, goals we undertake to achieve. So, um, Naja, thank you very much. Been a fantastic evening and. Uh, we know you're always there to support us when you're called upon. You answer the call from this, and thank you very much. To our present elects and secretary elects who are here, thank you all also. And I, I do want to remind you that, you know, because Rotary has everything you need to know in, 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 in its archive and its documentation, you need to go on to the learning center, you need to visit Rotary Club Central, where goals are posted there, and you are the ones who can select the number of goals you want to achieve, those that you think are achievable for the year, and, and um, take, take, jot them down and take advantage of doing them. As a matter of fact, the goals listed on the Club Central, certainly if you're accomplishing uh, 25 goals listed there, if you're accomplished more than half, you are entitled to a, a Rotary citation for your club. So that's a challenge that's all there that you that will, will stimulate you and your club members to doing uh, some worthwhile projects, achieving those goals and getting a citation. So members get excited by that because everybody, every club, every club loves to receive a citation. So I want to urge presents to please go to Rotary Club Central, set the goal, choose the goals that you want, and once you achieve more than a few, are uh, entitled to a Rotary citation. Um, our supporting DGs, well, thank you so much for being here with us. You are always there supporting us in our training, and we really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Our training team, as usual, we already have come up with a wonderful program tonight, ably presented by Nigel. Fantastic. Um, and of course, the man who is behind the scenes, Sean, thank you very much for putting on this show for us tonight. I think it was well handled. Everybody got into the respective trade, uh, breakout rooms and were able to make the respective contributions. So thank you very much. Folks, um, we, on Saturday, we will have the last of the, of, the, of the virtual presentations. It will be an interesting uh, meeting and it's probably one of the very important uh, Agendas in Rotary that is to deal with the Rotary Foundation. You know that's that is our foundation, and we need to support it. 
So I, I, I urge you to please attend on Saturday, starting at nine. And after that presentation, we will have a, a video presentation from our president-elect. So I urge you to please stay tuned and come and join us on Saturday morning at 9 a.m. to take part in that Rotary Foundation presentation. I, uh, I think we have Rotary Foundation Chair Wadi and Branch Chair PDG Lara. So please join us. So thank you very much for attending. Have a wonderful evening and we see you on Saturday.